Hello, everybody, and good, good morning. morning to you. How are you doing? Did you guys have a good weekend? So this is kind of the start of my week since I had Monday off. So had my coffee. I've woken up. Okay, so what is our plan today? So first off, we are going to do a listening exercise about bioterrorism. This is going to be a very interesting topic. I think it's quite relevant in today's environment with COVID going on and whatnot. And second, what are we going to have next? We are going to have a discussion and idioms. And what was that on? Oh yes, the future. So we're going to be having idioms and discussion around the future. So that should be a little bit more lighthearted and interesting. Well, not more interesting, but like, you know, more lighthearted than bioterrorism, perhaps. And finally, for the uh, last class today in the afternoon, it's going to be a breaking news English article on beaches disappearing. Ooh, so we're going to get into a little bit of dark, depressing kind of topics, but hopefully, you know, we can keep our spirits up and I hope we can learn a lot of cool new English words today and expressions. All right, so let's begin. So I would like you to please pull out this sheet here and it is titled, Bioterrorism Could Kill 30 Million People Within a Year. Oh, that's pretty intense. All right, so, um, I think what we will do is we are going to start off just by having a little bit of a chat about this. Okay, so the first question I want to ask you guys is, what is bioterrorism? What is bioterrorism? Terrorism. What do you guys think this means? If you have any ideas or thoughts, I'd like you to type out the answers into the comments section so I could read them out. And if you don't know the answer, that's totally fine. Don't worry about it. I'll, I'll, gonna, I'll give you some hints though. You know what terrorism is, right? Okay, I'm pointing over here. What is terrorism? So terrorism, kind of a scary, difficult topic to talk about, I do admit. But you know what terror is, right? Terror, so that's being afraid, scary things. So when someone commits an act of terrorism, that means that they are bringing fear into people and often this involves, unfortunately, killing many people. So one example is, do you guys remember 9-11 in New York City, there were the two towers, the World Trade Centers, and planes were driven into them and the towers collapsed. So that was an act of terrorism. So I'll write that down here. I can say an act of terrorism. So often, these words go together, an act of terrorism, but we also just say terrorism. Now, bio means life or living, such as, you know, biology. So bioterrorism, it's basically a form of terrorism informing life. Okay, so you might have gotten a hint like all these creepy little viruses and bacteria and illnesses that I drew up here, but Bioterrorism is when somebody creates, so we'll just put a mask on them, someone essentially creates viruses in a lab. Or at first they are going to design these on a computer, but then they create these viruses in a lab or these illnesses. And then eventually, they are released into the world. So I'm sorry, this might not be the best picture, 
but bioterrorism is essentially when someone or a group of people intentionally, on purpose, create illnesses and spread them out into the public. Now, I just want to clear something up. So there is a lot of thoughts on COVID-19 being bioterrorism. However, research shows so far that is not the case. So far, research is saying COVID-19 is not bioterrorism, but it's still a dangerous virus going around the world. And if bioterrorism ever happens, it could look similar to COVID-19 in that a lot of the world gets infected. So that's why we're studying this topic today, because we all know we're kind of in a pandemic right now, a bit scary. It's not bioterrorism necessarily, but in the future, this is very possible. Okay, so that is bioterrorism. I hope that cleared that up. If you still have some questions, just let me know anytime and I'll be happy to clear anything up. This, this is a bit of a complex topic, so don't be afraid to stop me if need be. Okay, so now that we've got that out of the way, let's go on to section number two. Okay, section number two is called catastrophe. Do you guys know what a catastrophe is? Catastrophe. This is a good word, so I'm going to write it under the new word section. All right. If anyone knows what catastrophe is, I'd like you to type out for me. But if you don't know, don't worry. I'm going to give you an example sentence of what a catastrophe is. So let's get rid of this question and this awful drawing of viruses being created in a lab. Okay, so catastrophe. Let's say, for example, so we could say COVID-19 is a worldwide catastrophe. So this is very true because it is infecting so many people and it's killed a lot of people too. So that's pretty awful and it's pretty horrible. So catastrophe is kind of similar almost to a disaster. So for example, in 2011, Japan, an earthquake and a tsunami hit. It was a real catastrophe. It could be used in everyday life as well. So let's say for example, um, I mean, I spill my bottle of water, there's a mess everywhere on the floor. Like, Oh God, this is a catastrophe. I messed up the floor. It's so dirty now. So it can be used kind of in everyday situations too. But a catastrophe is basically like a seriously awful, horrible thing that has happened. Okay, so we are going to talk about all of these catastrophes. Oh boy, what do we have here? Okay, so I'm going to start drawing a little table and then we can start filling it in. Okay, so let's see. What would happen in each of these catastrophes? Let's see, we got bioterrorism, star of the show today, woohoo! And, okay, so here we're saying, what would happen? What would happen? Okay, so, Let's say, for example, bioterrorism happens. So what do you think would happen? Let's say a new horrible virus hits the earth. What's going to happen? I'd like you guys to type out some suggestions. You can type out anything you want. Um, yeah, don't be shy. I'd like to hear your suggestions on what would happen. So I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. So I'll start off, for example, mm, maybe businesses might shut down. Businesses may shut down. So that's just one thing that could happen. There's so many things that could happen. So what else could happen if bioterrorism 
occurs, what do you think is going to happen? So write out your answers and how to avoid it. How to avoid. Okay. Uh, so you know what avoid means, right? So avoid means to kind of escape something. So for example, uh, maybe how to avoid it, it depends. But maybe we could wear a mask. It depends if the disease is airborne. So it comes from your mouth and saliva. So how to avoid? Maybe wear a mask. That might not be enough, um, but it could be one potential suggestion. Um, well, what else could happen? Of course, um, yes, many people could die. Absolutely. Not a nice thing, but it does happen. All right, so what would happen? How to avoid? Wear a mask. What else? Stay inside, maybe. Yeah, if you stay inside, you can't talk to people and no one else can infect you. And how to survive? How to survive? How to live? Okay, so this might be kind of similar to how to avoid. So I might just kind of put these two categories together. But how to survive? Hmm. Maybe we could. What do you guys think? Oh, someone said create a vaccine. Good. Thank you. Absolutely. Create a vaccine. Nice. That would be very helpful for surviving bioterrorism. If you have a vaccine, you can get all better, hopefully. So that's one way to survive it. Very good. If you guys have any other suggestions, definitely let me know and I can add them to the board. Okay, shall we move on? Next, we have nuclear war. Oh dear. Okay, we're just going into all sorts of awful today. I apologize. <laughs> Well, I, I kind of find this stuff interesting purposely. I don't know how you guys feel. Um, here is my nuclear weapon. <laughs> I tried, I'm sorry. Okay, so nuclear war. So basically, you know, that's like usually dropping bombs and then um, nuclear energy making us sick. So what would happen? If nuclear war happens, what, how is it going to affect us? What's going to happen to the planet? Not, maybe not just us, but think about plants and animals as well. Like what could happen? What do you guys think? Nuclear war. Well, I think maybe many plants and animals including us, could die. So that's kind of dark to think about. But if nuclear war happens and there's a lot of smoke and uh, dirt kicked up into the atmosphere, we might not get sunlight and then the plants will die. Animals then die, including us. So I think that's one thing that could happen, absolutely. All right, and I see someone else has said, get sick. Absolutely, yeah. People could get sick, for sure. Yeah, um, so if you're exposed to nuclear byproducts, you can get cancer, essentially. Like, it's pretty awful. So how do we avoid this? How do we avoid nuclear war? How can we not be subjects of nuclear war? What can we do? Perhaps we could, for example, mm, not fight. Let's not fight. Let's all just be friends. Of course, that's easier said than done. So, but what else could we do? How can we avoid? Or how can we survive? What do you guys think? Any thoughts? How can we survive or how can we avoid a nuclear war? All right, somebody said hide. Nice, thank you. Yeah, we can hide. 
So maybe hide underground, for example. So sometimes people create things that are called nuclear bunkers. So here's your house. So this is outside. And then maybe you have like a whole area underground. And then you just live here. And maybe you have a TV too, who knows. So yeah, this could be your little nuclear bunker. Some people actually have these because um, they're afraid of nuclear war happening. So they'll have a lot of food and a bed and they could just live underground for years. Seems kind of depressing. Okay, um, let's see. Um, let's just do one more. We're gonna do one more, then we're gonna move on to the main listening part. Um, just want to make sure we have enough time. I think we'll have enough time. Okay. Let's do rising ocean level. You guys know what a rising ocean level is? All right. So obviously, you know what the ocean is. Rising. So the ocean's getting higher and higher and higher. So that's pretty scary stuff too. So when the ocean level rises, what is gonna happen? We're gonna talk about this later actually in our uh, elective class. What is gonna happen with a rising ocean level? What do you guys think? Hmm. Yeah, someone said flooding, thank you, good. Yeah, there will be flooding. So basically your house might go underwater. The streets are going to go underwater. So I don't know. So maybe some cities might disappear, especially cities on the coastline. So some cities might disappear under the ocean. All right. So how can we avoid this? What do you think we could do? How do we avoid a rising sea level? What do you think we can do? Believe it or not, we can do something. Do you guys have any thoughts? I can give you one idea. Uh, so maybe we could lower our CO2 emissions. So that means carbon dioxide emissions. So basically this happens when we are driving around cars a lot. We have factories. Um, we are cutting down forests. We're farming cows and they create a lot of methane. So lower our emissions and then the sea level will stop rising as much because less ice melts. All right, and how, but how do we survive this? Let's say we don't stop our CO2 emissions and the sea level continues to rise. How do we survive? What do you think we could do? How do we not die from this? Any thoughts, guys? All right, so maybe we could relocate. So relocate, that means, that's a good word. I'm going to write that down. Relocate. So that means to move from one place to another. So if you, for example, live by the ocean, you are not, and there's a sea level rise, you're going to want to move to somewhere a little bit further from the ocean. Maybe you're going to move further up the mountains or you're going to move more inland. That's probably the best way to survive sea level rise. So if anyone's in Vancouver living by the water, get out of here. <laughs> okay, so I think this is good for the table. And I think I would like to do the listening now. So what we'll do is you're going to fill in the gaps. Don't peek at my answers here. So let's erase the board. Okay, so get rid of that. Do you guys live anywhere close to the ocean? Are you afraid of sea level rise? I live kind of close to the ocean, uh, a river actually. I live close to the Fraser River. So I'm a little bit concerned about the river rising and my home getting destroyed. Okay, 
So, number one, there is going to be one, two, three words that you're going to fill in. Number two, one, two, three, four words. Number three, one, two, three, four. And number four, let's see, one, two, three words. Number five, you're going to look for one, two, three words. And number six, you are going to look for one, two, three, four words. Okay, now four words might seem like a lot to take in, but remember that some of these words, they're going to be very short words, like articles. So, you know, it could be like a, uh, the, he, like, you know, it could be really short words. So don't get too scared by the amount of blanks that you have to fill in. Okay, so I'm going to read the whole article one time for you. And this, so I'd like you to try and fill in the blanks as best as you can. The second time, I'm going to read the first half a little bit slower, okay? So the first time, I'm going to go at a regular speed. Okay, are you guys ready? Here we go in three, two, one. Bioterrorism could kill 30 million a year. The former head of Microsoft, Bill Gates, has warned that the world could be in great danger from bioterrorism. He said the world could face a catastrophe from a virus made by terrorists that could kill 30 million people in less than a year. Mr. Gates, the richest person in the world, was speaking at the Munich Security Conference in Germany. He said there was a reasonable chance that a bioterrorist could act in the next 10 to 15 years. Oh, not long. He added that world leaders are not prepared for such an attack. He expressed his surprise that very few of the leaders were even aware of it. He asked for global health security to become a major part of government discussions and policies. Mr. Gates explained that the next epidemic has a good chance of originating on a computer screen. He said a genetically engineered virus was easier to make and could kill more people than nuclear weapons. But no country on earth is ready for this threat. He asked the governments to prepare for these epidemics in the same way we prepare for war. Gates asked governments to start germ game activities to prepare for a bioterrorist attack, like many countries engage in war games. He said we needed better monitoring to spot outbreaks early and systems to de quickly develop vaccines within weeks rather than years. We need a new arsenal of weapons, antiviral drugs, antibodies, vaccines, and new diagnostics, he said. Okay, so that was the first round of reading. How, did, how was that, guys? Was it pretty easy to write down all the answers? Or was it a little bit difficult? You can let me know in the comments. Okay, now I want you to try and give me the answers from number one to number six. So what I'll do is I'm going to read it out a second time, but a little bit slower, okay? So please type in the answers as best as you can. Okay, here we go. The former head of Microsoft, Bill Gates, has warned that the world could be in great danger from bioterrorism. He said that the world could face a catastrophe from a virus made by terrorists that could kill 30 million people in less than a year. Mr. Gates, the richest person in the world, was speaking at the Munich Security Conference in Germany. He said there was a reasonable chance that a bioterrorist could act in the next 10 to 15 years. He added that world leaders are not prepared for such an attack. 
he expressed his surprise that very few leaders were even aware of it. He asked for global health security to become a major part of government discussions and policies. Okay, so that was number one to number six. Let's see if you guys can fill in the answers. So what did we get for number one? The former head of Microsoft, Bill Gates, blank, 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 the world could. What do you guys think? Feel free to type it in, don't be shy. And how about number two? The world could blank, 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 blank from bioterrorism. Did anyone get the answers? All right, someone has written number one. They said, has warned that, good. So the former head of Microsoft has warned that, warned. So you know what warned is, right? So that means to tell someone, hey, be careful, this is gonna happen. So for example, maybe you're going out for a walk and I'm going to warn you, hey, it's raining outside, you might wanna take an umbrella or you're going to get wet. That's me warning you about the rain outside. Okay, number two. I don't see any answers for number two. So what I was hoping for was the world could be in great danger. Be in great danger. So this is an expression pretty common in English to be in great danger. So let's say for example, if you're going for a hike in the woods alone, you could be in danger if there are bears and mountain lions that could attack you. So dangerous situation. Okay, and number three, he said the world could face a catastrophe, blank, 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 by terrorists. Did anyone get number three? Starts with an F, V, and an M. Any thoughts, guys? Sorry, I'm thirsty, let me just hydrate. Even on a rainy day today, like today, I get thirsty. I'm always thirsty. <laughs> okay, so someone said from a virus. Good, nice. From a virus made. Thank you, good job. From a virus made by terrorists that could kill 30 million people in less than a year. All right, so that's the title. Basically, someone's going to make a virus and it could kill 30 million people. That's a lot of people. That's a huge amount of people in one year. That's insane. Okay, now number four. Did anyone get number four? So he said there blank, 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 chance that a bioterrorist could act in the next 10 to 15 years. All right, so three words. W and R. So any thoughts? And how about number five? He added that world leaders are not blank, blank, blank for an attack. So you got a P and an F and an S. I don't see any answers coming in yet. That's okay. Now, um, number four, I was hoping someone would write down, there was a reasonable, a reasonable chance that a bioterrorist could attack in the next 10 to 15 years. Wow, okay. So I don't know when this article was made. Let's just pretend this article was made in 2018, maybe? So 2018, so between then, 2038, so like between then and like 2042, at some point, there could be a bioterrorist act. So within 10 to 15 years, 
that's pretty soon. Like, yeah, oh wait, 2018, 2028, 29, 30, sorry, 2032. I can't do math, apparently. <laughs> okay, so 2032. So between now and 2032, there could be a bioterrorist attack. Pretty scary. Okay, number five. So I don't see any answers coming in for number five, and, but here is the answers. He said, he added that world leaders are not prepared. Prepared for such an attack. So let's say a bioterrorist attack happens. So world leaders, who are those? So basically those are like presidents, prime minister, and other important figures for each country. So for example, um, Prime Minister of Japan is Shinzo Abe, Can Canada's Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau, America's tr President, Trump. So they are not ready for this to happen. They can't stop it. If a bioterrorist attack happens, we are all going to be in deep doo-doo or deep trouble. So no one is prepared. <laughs> Uh, all right, and let's do number six. Let's see if anyone got number six. So Bill Gates expressed his surprise that very few leaders were even aware of it. So many prime ministers, presidents, they don't know about this. They're not aware. So to be aware of something means you know about something. So for example, right now, Many people are aware of COVID and how dangerous it is. Okay, so Bill Gates asked for global health security to become a major part of government discussions and policies. Okay, so I just read out the answer to become blank, 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 blank. Uh, M P. Oh, okay, so those are my hints. Let's see if you can guess the answers. Okay, so health security. So what does that mean? Global health security. So global refers to the world. Health, so that means, you know, being healthy, strong. Security, you know what security is, right? Sometimes you see security standing outside. They might look like this if you're going to a club or a bar, or if you're in a mall, you'll see security, they're tough, they're kind of scary, they stop people from doing something bad. So health security is supposed to stop this from happening. All right, so I see someone has answered number six, thank you. So they wrote a major part, good, thank you. A major part of, okay. So he asked for global health security to become a major part of government discussions and policies. All right, so you know what a policy is? So policies are parts almost of like a law. So they're not quite laws. So maybe I'll say law, and then further down is policy. So these are aspects of a law. They're more like rules, essentially. Rules that you should follow. So let's see, for example, at GC, at Global College, we have a policy that if you don't come to class, uh, three times, you cannot go to the next level. I don't know if that's true or not. I kind of forget the rules and policies. Or, okay, here's a better one. We have a late policy. If you are 15 minutes late to class, you cannot come to class. So that is a policy that we have at GC. It's a rule. It's not the law, but it's like a weaker law. It's a rule, a policy. Okay. How are we doing, guys? We good? So I'm going to get rid of all these 
And we're going to do the next six. Let's see, I think we have about 15-ish minutes of class left. Okay. All righty, so number seven. What's number seven? We got four blanks. Number eight, we have two blanks, only two, but they're longer, more complicated words. So listen well for number eight. Uh, number nine, three blanks. Number 10, one, two, three blanks. Number 11, also three blanks. And number 12, a whopping four blanks. Okay, so I'm going to read out number seven to number 12 slowly. So get your pens ready and get ready to type out the answers, okay? Here we go in three, two, one. Mr. Gates explained that the next epidemic has a good chance of originating on a computer screen. He said a genetically engineered virus was easier to make and could kill more people than nuclear weapons, but no country on earth is ready for this threat. He asked governments to prepare for these epidemics in the same way that we prepare for war. Gates asked governments to start germ game activities to prepare for a bioterrorist attack like many countries engage in war games. He said we needed better monitoring to spot outbreaks early and systems to quickly develop vaccines within weeks rather than years. We need a new arsenal of weapons, antiviral drugs, antibodies, Vaccines and new diagnostics, he said. Okay, so that was number seven to number 12. And I'd like you to type out the answers. You guys ready? What is number seven? I'll quickly read it. Mr. Gates has explained the next epidemic has a good chance of originating on a computer screen. So we got H G C. What do you guys think that is? I'm going to do number eight as well. He said a genetically engineered virus was easier to make. So G E. All right. So let's see if you guys can guess that. And yep, yeah, seven, eight. What do you guys think? Any thoughts? All right. Someone said has a good chance. Nice. Good has a good chance. Nice, nice. So the next epidemic. So you know what an epidemic is, right? Epidemic. So COVID-19 started off as an epidemic. Like it's when the virus spreads to many people. Eventually it becomes a pandemic. So that is when it goes to many countries around the world. So this is serious too. This is very serious. Once it gets to a pandemic, it means it's all around the world. All right. So it sounds like you're going to be on a computer. A bioterrorist creates a virus on a computer first. Then they can physically put it together. Pretty scary. Okay. And number eight, I don't see responses. Um, so this is a bit of a tricky one. The answer was genetically engineered. Okay, so this is a bit tricky to explain, but you're taking genes, parts of the human body, for example, or parts of viruses, and essentially you are taking like all these genes to make a crazy, scary, bad virus. You're engineer like, so bioterrorists, they're engineering, they're making these viruses. Okay, number nine, and let's do number 10 as well. All right, he said, so he said a genetically engineered virus was easier to make and could kill more people than nuclear weapons, but no country on earth is ready for this threat. F 
T T. All right, let's see if you can fill in the blanks. He asked governments to prepare for these epidemics in the same way we prepare for war. Gates asked governments to start game, sorry, germ game activities. G G A. Let's see if you guys can fill in the missing parts. Okay. So what was number nine and what was number 10? What do you guys think? He said a genetically engineered virus was easier to make and could kill more people than nuclear weapons, but no country on earth? Yes, thank you, good. Is ready for this threat. For this, sorry, that's very light, threat. Okay, so you know what a threat is? A threat is similar to a danger. So, COVID-19 is a terrible threat to us. Global warming is a big threat to us. Bioterrorism might be a big threat to us. Okay, and number 10. So he asked governments to prepare for these epidemics the same way we prepare for war. So he asked governments to start don't see a response, but he asked them to start, start, bleh, start germ game activities, activities. All right, so you know what germs are? They're all over your skin. Sometimes they make you sick, but not always. But here he's talking about strategy games. So it's all about trying to stop the germs from spreading and becoming an epidemic. So fun games perhaps. All right, number 11, number 12. Okay, he said we needed better monitoring to spot outbreaks early and systems to develop vaccines within weeks rather than years. T-S-O. Okay, we need a new arsenal of weapons. Something N-A-O. All right. Can you guys fill in the answers here? Number 11, we need better monitoring to what? To, all right, good. Someone said to spot, nice, to spot. And the word I'm looking for here is outbreaks. Good try, thank you. Okay, so to spot means to find. So this is another way to say to find, to spot. Okay, and outbreaks, you know what an outbreak is. It's when maybe one or two people get sick, then another person gets sick, another person gets sick, then many people get sick. So every winter, we always have an outbreak of the flu at school. Okay, and number 12, any thoughts? Someone said a new, good, nice. And new what? So the word I was looking for here is arsenal, a new arsenal of. Okay, so arsenal, this means a collection of weapons. Now the weapons they're talking about here is vaccines and drugs to fight these viruses. So arsenal is not always guns and bombs, it can be other things too. Okay, pretty good stuff, guys. Well done. Thank you for filling in the blanks. Okay, so we're running a little short on time. So instead of true or false, maybe we can do comprehension first. So maybe we'll do comprehension. And if we have time, maybe after the break, we can do true or false or discussion. Okay, so let's do comprehension. Number one. Who warned the world about the threat of bioterrorism? What was the name of the person who warned everyone about bioterrorism? He's a very famous man. I think most people know about him. Most people know who he is. Okay, so number one. Okay, this pen's getting a little bit not so great, so let's switch up. His name starts with a B, that's my hint. So, who was it? 
Who was the person who warned everyone about bioterrorism? Someone said Bill Gates. Nice. Yes, Bill Gates. Bill Gates, the former head of Microsoft. He used to be the owner, the boss of Microsoft. Good. Okay. Number two, in which country was the security conference? Okay, so all these questions are in order. So just read through your article quickly and see if you can find the World Security Conference. All right. So we'll do this last question and then I believe it's going to be break time. So any thoughts? Which country did this take place in? Don't see any answers yet. I'll give you another couple seconds. Hmm. All right, so that's okay. This happened in Germany, very famous country in Europe. Okay, so we've come up to our first break. I apologize I didn't get through this quicker. I think what we'll do is after the break, we're going to come back to this. We'll spend maybe 10 minutes on this, and then we're going to move on to the discussion and idioms. All right, guys, so have a, take a break, um, have some coffee, take a power nap, do what you got to do, and we'll see you at around 11 o'clock. All right, bye-bye.
is in. Welcome back. Hope, Hope you had a nice break there and got a little bit of rest. All right, like I said, we're going to work on the comprehension a little bit more. Then we're going to go on to our idioms about the future and discussion. Okay, so we got to number two. Let's do question number three now. All right, so within how many years could a bioterrorism act take place? All right, so how many years? So remember to look for the word years in here and let me know how many years. And let's do number four as well while we're at it. So who is not prepared for a bioterrorist attack? Who? All right, so number three and number four. Okay, somebody said within 10 to 15 years. Nice, good, thank you, thank you. Yes. So within 10 to 15 years, the next bioterrorism attack could happen. And who isn't ready for bioterrorist attacks? Any guesses? Yes, good, world leaders, thank you. Well done. World leaders are not ready for these attacks. Okay, so going on to question number five. Um, what did a man, I don't know why they say a man, but it's Bill Gates. What did Bill Gates want to be a major part of government discussions? Okay, so this one might be a bit trickier, but so what did Bill Gates want to be a part of government discussions and policies? So what is it? So this is a three, maybe three words. I'll give you a hint. G H S. Okay. And number six, where might the next epidemic originate? Ooh, where is it going to originate? I'll give you a hint. It's not talking about a country. It's talking about something else or somewhere else completely different. All right. And someone typed in global health security. Good. That is correct. Global health security. Okay, so Gates wants global health security to be a part of discussions and policies. And someone said computer for number six. Very good. So these viruses could be genetically engineered. They could be made on computer screens first. So you got So they're gonna do it on a computer screen. Hmm. Pretty creepy. Okay, number seven. What could a genetically engineered virus be deadlier than? Okay, so we have two things. So here's our, let's say, okay, this is our virus. And this is our, this is the other thing. So this is deadlier. And this is deadly. But, so a virus could be deadlier than what? I'll let you type in the answer. Uh, it could be two words, technically. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of the first couple ones and write down eight, nine, and 10. Eight, nine, 10. Okay, and number eight. What kind of games did a man suggest government start engaging in? So these, this one has two words as well. Starts with GG. All right, and number nine. What do governments need to spot outbreaks earlier? Oh, okay, I see an answer coming in for number seven. And they said, sorry, let me double check. Nuclear weapons, yes, that's right. Nuclear weapons, thank you. Nuclear weapons. All right, so a genetically engineered virus could be deadlier than nuclear weapons. I'm gonna put W, pretty scary. All right, number eight, someone said germ games. Nice, germ games, the new risk war games. Okay, so number nine, so what do governments need to spot uh, outbreaks better. 
So maybe two words here. And number 10, within what time frame did the man say we needed to develop vaccines? Okay. Within something. Okay. So what do governments need to spot outbreaks earlier? They need, I'll give you a hint, they need better something. Better what? Oh, monitoring. Yes, good. Someone said monitoring. Good. So monitoring means watching for something. So for example, if we see two or three people sick with a deadly virus, we can stop them from spreading the virus. So it's watching carefully. And number 10, someone said within weeks. Good, excellent, within weeks. So we need to make vaccines within weeks. All right, good stuff, guys, thank you. So we're gonna put this away for now, I believe. And I think it's time for us to move on to the future. Ooh. So I'd like you to please take this out. Please take out your sheet that says the future. And I'm going to get rid of all this. Okay. Okay. What did you think about the bioterrorism article? Was it interesting? Did you like it? Or was it kind of scary? And did you feel a bit sad reading the article? I found it kind of interesting, I think, but um, a little bit scary, for sure. It's a scary topic to talk about, bioterrorism. All right, so I think the future will be a little bit more of like kind of a bright fun, like kind of a bright thing to talk about. The future. All right. The future. Okay, so let's start this off with a little quick question. So, when you hear the word future, the future, what do you think about? So when you see this word, what comes to your mind? What springs to mind when you see this word, future? So, for example, I often think about tomorrow. What am I going to do tomorrow? So that's one thing. What else can come to mind? Yeah, someone said work. Thank you. Good. So yeah, maybe people think about their jobs. Um, what else? School. Good. School. Absolutely. Any other thoughts? When you say the future, what do you think about? Any other thoughts? Someone said scary. Okay, yeah, the future can be scary. The future is unknown. Unknown. So that means you don't know what's gonna happen and maybe that's scary and that's okay. All right, yeah, I think that's good. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we are, we'll have a discussion on this later, but I'd like to go over a couple of idioms or some expressions, okay. So I'm gonna get rid of this because we're gonna need the board. Okay, so, 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 so. All right, the first one. It is just around the corner. Just around the corner. Okay, so. Let's say here's a wall and here's you and then here is, let's say, um, here's an event. Okay, so when you say something is just around the corner, like figuratively it means it will happen soon. So let's say for example, Oh, um, my husband's birthday is just around the corner. Um, it's going to be next week. So my husband's birthday is just around the corner. Just around the corner. 
So I better think of a nice present to give him. So I should buy him a present. What should I give my husband for his birthday? What do you guys think? He likes video games a lot. Um, he also likes anime. Yeah. So that's what it means to be just around the corner. It means it's going to happen very soon. Usually within like a few days, a few weeks, maybe even a few months. So let's say, for example, what else is around the corner? Oh, Canada Day is just around the corner. Canada Day is just around the corner. It's going to be tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Can you guys tell me something that's just around the corner for you? For example, maybe it's your birthday. Maybe it's your family. Maybe it's a family member's birthday. Maybe you're going to graduate from school. Or maybe you're going to go or move somewhere new. Okay. So I'd like you to try and make a sentence for me. So you could say, blank, blank is just around the corner. Around the corner. So please give me an example. I'd like you to type it out and I'd love to read your example, okay? Don't be, excuse me, burp there. Don't be shy, okay? So please give me an example of something that's just around the corner for you, okay? If you don't type it, I want you to at least practice saying it at home, okay? So for example, one, two, three, Canada Day is just around the corner, woo! Okay, but yeah, please type in your sentence. I would love to read it out. Do you guys have any plans for Canada Day tomorrow? I have no plans so far, surprisingly. I want to go on a hike, but if it rains, I don't think I'll go on a hike. I'm definitely going to sleep in though. I'm looking forward to that. Woohoo! Okay. I don't see any sentences coming in yet. That's fine. Feel free to type it in anytime, even if I erase it, okay? Next idiom. In the blink of an eye. In the blink of an eye. Okay, you guys know what a blink is? Okay, so watch my eyes closely. That's a blink. It's when you quickly close your eyes. It happens, it happens all the time with you because you have to keep your eyes moist and wet. So you're always blinking, even if you don't know it. So in the blink of an eye, so I'm going to draw some eyes, do, 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 do. and then, so this is a blink. Your eyes shut and then your eyes open in the blink of an eye. So it's only one eye, I guess. Whoop, 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 there we go. So what does that mean? A blink is really quick. Blinks are really quick. So that means something happened really quickly before you could even stop it. So let's say for example, mm, oh man, yesterday I was really hungry. So I bought a, a bowl of pad thai. Um, it's like a Thai food, Thai noodles. I love it so much. So I was so hungry that I ate my lunch in the blink of an eye. In the blink of an eye. So basically, I ate my lunch super fast. Maybe not literally in the blink of an eye. No one can eat that fast, but it's an expression. Um, what's, another good, what's another good example? Uh, ha, ha, ha. Oh, my sister is very smart at math. She can solve any math problem in the blink of an eye. She can solve math problems really quickly. That's just an example. Now, I'd like you guys to create an example sentence, please. I'd like you to create a sentence for 
in the blink of an eye. It can be a sentence about yourself or somebody you know, or a famous person or an animal, it doesn't matter. So for example, my cat can catch mice in the blink of an eye. So please write out an example sentence for me so you can practice. It's the best way to practice is to make your own sentence. If you don't write it, I'd like you to try speaking at home, okay? Try to say a sentence. Something to do with in the blink of an eye. Sometimes I drink my water in the blink of an eye. I drink it so quickly. Okay. So keep writing in your answers if you have any suggestions. I really would like to hear from you guys, so please don't be shy. I am going to put up the next idiom in the meantime. All right. Okay. And next one. Ah, oh, better luck next time. This one I don't think I can draw as well. Better luck next time. Okay, whoops. Okay, so that was a very awful way to write out time. Let's try that again. Time, okay, so what does this mean? Okay, so the explanation here is a little bit wordy. It does say something just had poor results, but in the future it will be better. So you know what luck is, right? So, you know, when you get lucky, if you win the lottery, that means you have good luck. Okay, so let's pretend we have someone playing a soccer match or football as some people might call it in different parts of the world. And here's team one, here's team two. This is my friend. Maybe my friend is on team one and they're trying to play a soccer match, but team two gets the ball and it goes into the net. Hooray, they win. My friend is very sad. It's like, oh, I really wanted to win that soccer game. And, but I can try and cheer them up. So this is me. And I'll be like, oh, you know, it's okay. You know what, better luck next time. Next time you're going to win. So you didn't win this time, but next time you'll win. So I lost. So sad. Better luck next time. Better luck next time. So usually we just say it by itself. We just say better luck next time. Okay, so this happened to me when I was writing an exam in university. I didn't get a very good mark. <laughs> I didn't study enough. So I was like, oh, I got a bad mark on my exam. My grade's not good. Ugh, I feel kind of upset. And my friend said, you know, don't worry about it. Better luck next time. You'll get it next time. All right. So for this one, I'm not going to ask you to make a sentence because usually you use this on your own. But it is a good idiom to know about. All right. So we're going to move on to the next idiom. If I'm moving too quickly or you want me to explain another idiom, let me know, okay? I'm happy to go back and go over anything that you, if you didn't quite understand it. All right, so say goodbye to our soccer losers. And I'm gonna draw the next idiom. All right, woohoo! So, all right, let's see if you can guess what I'm drawing here. What do you think I'm drawing, guys? See if you can guess the idiom. What do you think the idiom is? If you know the answer, please type it out. I want to see if you can guess which idiom am I talking about. So what do we have here? We got a clock. It's flying. There's a person, they're looking pretty happy, like maybe they're having some, what do you think? Yes, somebody said, good, time flies when you're having fun, nice, good, this is time. 
Time flies when you're having fun. And I think this is very true. This always happens to me. So basically it means when you're enjoying yourself, when you're having fun, the time seems to pass by much quicker. As opposed to when you're bored, ugh, time moves so slowly. That happens to me. I feel like it happens to most people. So let me think of some examples. And I'd like you guys to think of some situations too. You don't have to make a sentence for this, but I'm trying to think of a situation when time flies. So for example, I love to go camping. Um, especially, I love to sit by a campfire. So usually I'll like be roasting marshmallows and you know, I'll be talking with my friends. So this is really fun for me. So when I go camping, or when I have a campfire with my friends, time flies for me. Time flies by really quickly. So this is a situation for me when time flies. So how about you? When does this happen to you? What sort of situations? So when, where do you have fun? Like at a party or when you're reading a book maybe? when you're in class studying English. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but yeah, what, when does this situation happen? So for me, like I said, camping. You could just type out one word. You don't have to type out a whole sentence. Just tell me what's fun. Like, when does time fly by for you? Any thoughts? What else? For me, uh, sometimes, yeah, when I see my friends and if we're party, if we have a party together, time will fly by for me because I'm having fun. Uh, when I see my family, sometimes we'll have dinner together and time can fly by pretty quickly. Okay, good stuff, guys. I'm not seeing too many folks responding, but that is okay. All right. So I'm gonna get rid of time flies. We've got two idioms left and then we have discussion. Okay, so in the near future, in the near future. Okay, so what does this mean? In the near future means very soon. If you say in the future, that can be any time between tomorrow and 50 years or 100 years or 1,000 years from now. It's who knows. But if you say in the near future, this means, I don't know, it could be anywhere between, I don't know, like two to three days to maybe, I'd say six months perhaps maybe or no three three months so this means very soon like not 10 20 years later soon but usually two to three days to three months so for example mm, let's see what am i going to do in the near future um let's say for example i want to go camping in the near future I wanting, whoops, no, that is not grammatically correct, Melanie. I want to go camping. Two, go camping in the near future. In the near future. Okay, so that means I want to go camping soon, like this summer soon, not next year, this year. Not in like the winter, but in the summer, like next week, next month. So I want to go camping in the near future. All right, now it's your turn. Is there something you want to do in the near future or anything that you need to do in the near future? I'd like you to try and make up your own sentence and type it out, please. Uh, so what's another example? 
in the near future, I have to clean my house. It's messy. <laughs> so that's something I have to do in the near future is, future, is clean my house. I'm very bad at cleaning my house. I'm lazy. Lazy cleaner. <laughs> Are you guys lazy cleaners? Okay. No responses. But yeah, feel free to chime in at any time, okay? So, we're going to move on to our last idiom now. Whoop, whoop. All right. Ahead of time. Okay, so here it says he was ahead of time. I'm just going to put the base form to be ahead. Okay, sorry, that's one word, not two words, not ahead. Ahead of time. Okay. So I'll draw a little picture. And so here's our little clock again. And here's our friend. So he is ahead of time. So ahead of time means basically, okay, so here, it's, hmm, he advanced in some way. So this means essentially like you're not late, like you're finishing, you're doing something before it's due, like you're like advanced. Okay, so I'm going to write down an example sentence. Um, I finished my assignment ahead of time. That never happens with me. I always finish my assignments on time or late. Ahead of time. Okay, so let's say my assignment, so the due date, for my assignment is, uh, let's see, July 6th, but I finish, so I finish my assignment on July 2nd. Woo. So I finished my assignments ahead of time, so before it was due. Uh, what's another example? Um, <laughs> so usually, oh, usually I try to make my breakfast ahead of time so that when I wake up in the morning, I can quickly eat my breakfast and go to work instead of cooking my breakfast in the morning and running late. So I try to prepare my meals, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, ahead of time. Okay, now I'm going to ask you, do you ever do something ahead of time? Like, do you ever prepare your meals ahead of time? Or do you finish your assignments ahead of time? Is there anything you do ahead of time? I'd like you to try and make an example sentence for me, please. It can be short. That's totally fine. Okay, so that was the last idiom. Um, so I hope you guys are able to get some good, excellent idioms down. Now we're going to move on to conversation, discussion. Mm. Now that I've cleared up my throat and I can speak properly. All right, let's get this sheet out of the way. Okay, and I'm going to erase this. No more in the near future. And we're going to get rid of ahead of time, too. Not seeing any answers. Boo-hoo. I want to see people's sentences, but I'm not seeing anything. Wah. All right. Now we're going to talk about your future. Woohoo! So this should be fun. I hope you guys respond, because it's always more exciting when I have students give me examples or responses for these conversation questions. So I'm not just talking to myself because that's kind of boring. Okay, so first question. What are three things you really want for your future? All right, so three things you want for your future. Now there's no right or wrong answer, okay? It's just what do you want, okay? 
So I'd like you to type in three things you want for your future, okay? I'm going to give you some examples and then I would like you to type in your own answer. Okay, so three things I want for my future. Oh boy. Uh, hmm. I want to, what do I want for my future? I want to, hmm, oh my goodness, this is hard. I want a dog. <laughs> I want a dog. So I know that seems kind of sim simple, but I really want to have a dog in my family. Right now it's just my husband and me living together, but I really think a dog would be great to have in my life. So that's one thing, I want a dog. Uh, what else do I want? Um, maybe whew, an outdoor job, that could be fun. So right now I'm studying habitat restoration. It's where I fix areas in nature that have been damaged by people. So maybe an outdoor career could be fun, perhaps. Um, what else? One more thing. Go, go ahead, type out your answers, by the way. Don't be shy. You could just keep your answers short like this, okay? That's totally fine. Third thing, what else do I want for my future? Um, maybe a home in a quiet neighborhood. A home in a quieter neighborhood. The neighborhood I live in now is not quiet. It's kind of noisy. Uh, there's lots of trucks that go by, lots of honking, lots of people shouting at each other late at night. It's, 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 it's not very nice sometimes. So one day in the future, maybe not the near future, but distant future, I want a home in a quieter neighborhood. That would be very lovely. I would really like that. Yeah, so for me, a dog, maybe an outdoor job or outdoor career and a home in a quieter neighborhood. So those are three things I want in my future. What about you guys? Don't copy my answers. I want you to think of your own answers, okay? Maybe you want a cat, I don't know. Go ahead. I love to see what you guys have to say. I'm curious, anybody out there? Angela, are you out there today by chance? What are three things that you want in your future? All right, guys. Maybe, maybe you're typing now and I'm just moving too quickly. But yeah, don't be shy. Let me know. Okay, so now let's do the next question. This is a bit tricky. How do you decide on your priorities? Okay, um, that's a good word. I'm gonna write it down. I'm gonna erase some of these words because I think you guys have had a chance to write them down. Okay, priorities, priorities. Priorities, priorities. So priorities are things that you need to do, things that you have to get done in your life. So for example, my list of priorities today. So I got to cook dinner. Um, I have to vacuum and I have to do my homework. <laughs> Yay, exciting life. Okay, so those are some priorities I need to take care of today. So let me just get rid of this on the board here. Nobody told me three things they want for their future. I'm very sad. Okay, so how do you decide on your priorities? Deciding on your priorities. So this might be a bit of a trickier question. So me, what do I do? For example, I, I decide on my priorities. I decide on my priorities depending on, Mm, I would say how important they are. How important they are. Okay, 
So let's say, for example, uh, let's, so what are my priorities? So let's say I have to cook dinner, I have to vacuum, this is a vacuum cleaner, and let's see, I have to take out the garbage. Okay, so how do I decide on my priorities? Let's see. Um, let's say, okay, we have to eat tonight. My husband and I, if we don't eat, we're going to go hungry. So I think making dinner, probably my top priority for tonight. Uh, and afterwards, okay, garbage is getting kind of stinky. Um, there's flies going around there. It, it smells like ugh, pretty bad. So I think taking out the garbage is my second priority. That's also pretty important. Okay, vacuuming, well, the floor is not super dirty. So maybe that's not such an important priority to me. So maybe I won't vacuum today. Maybe I'll vacuum tomorrow or the day after. But I gotta take this garbage out. It smells awful. So that's how I decided my priorities. It's depending on how important I think they are. Now it's not just everyday chores. It can be like bigger things in life too, like jobs, school, or getting married. Like for some people, getting married is a huge priority or having children could be a big priority. So how do you decide on your priorities? You could start your sentence like this. It could be similar to this. If you just want to give a shorter answer, that's totally fine too. I understand this is a bit of a tricky question. So if I see silence on the chat board, I completely understand. But it would be nice to, if you could try to give this question a stab, okay? All right. Hmm, let's do the next one. Ooh, this is a good one. So if you, this is, does your future look cloudy to you? Future looks cloudy. Okay, so when you're talking about, this is another idiom. So here is a future and there's a lot of clouds. So do you think that means we can see it easily? No, it's difficult to see. Like we can't tell what's gonna happen. And that makes us a bit scared or maybe even sad. So if you say the future looks cloudy to me, it means the future looks uncertain and maybe even a bit bad because maybe those clouds are kind of dark and maybe it's going to rain and most people don't like the rain. So this can have two meanings. It could mean the future looks uncertain or the future looks bad. So, the next question. Uh, let me get this out of the way. Goodbye, stinky garbage. Does your future look cloudy to you or does it look clear? Okay, so is your future cloudy or is it clear? So when your future is clear, that means you can see what is going on. You know what's going to happen in your future. So maybe you're, for example, like, yep, um, I'm going to get a job here. I'm going to live here. I'm going to get married. I'll have children. Like maybe you know everything that's going to happen. So you feel safe and maybe happy. So does your future look cloudy or does your future look clear? What do you guys think? There's no right or wrong answer. It's just your own thoughts about your own future. What do you think? For me, I feel like my future is kind of in the middle. Hard to say. I might say cloudy. Not in the sense that it's going to be bad, but for me, it just seems a bit uncertain. So right now I'm in school and I'm going to graduate maybe next year. And once I graduate, I don't know what's gonna happen. I'm gonna have to find a job, but I don't know if my job will be in Vancouver 
or if my job's gonna be somewhere far away in another part of Canada. So if I have to move, my life is going to change a lot for my husband and me. So I'd say right now my future is a bit uncertain because I don't know where I'm going to be in a year or two from now. But that's not always a bad thing. It keeps life exciting. Now, I'd like you to let me know, is your future cloudy or is it clear? Let me know in the comments. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let me take, we don't have enough time to do all of these questions, so I'm just going to try and choose a few of the best ones. Okay. Hmm. Oh, this is a good one. Okay. Let's do the lottery question. You all know what a lottery is, right? So lottery is when you win a lot of money. So maybe you pay $10 for a lottery ticket and then you find out you win. So you get maybe like a million dollars or something crazy or maybe like $10 million. Wow, that's amazing. So it's kind of like gambling almost. You're paying a little bit of money for the chance to win a big amount of money. All right, so I'm going to erase this. Okay, first of all, do any of you play in the lottery? Do you ever buy lotto tickets? We call them lotto tickets for short. Do you ever buy lottery lotto tickets? I don't, but my husband does sometimes. He'll buy a ticket in hopes that he'll win some sweet, sweet money. Okay, so if you won the lottery, woohoo! Would you still have a job? Why or why not? So if you won the lottery, if you won the lottery, would you still have a job? For me, this is a tricky question to answer. Okay, so for this one, you could just say yes or no. Um, so for example, uh, if I won the lottery, I think I would still have a job. Um, so I would say yes. And why? So why? I think I would still have a job because I don't want to become too lazy. I want to keep improving my skills. So that's my reason. What about you? Would you still have a job if you won the lottery? It doesn't matter if you say yes or no. It's, there's no right or wrong answer. I won't judge. And what would you do with the money? Ooh, that would be fun. What would you do with the money? So this is the second part of the question. What would you do with the money? So I think if I won the lottery, um, I would probably go traveling around the world. Um, like maybe I take some time off and go on a vacation and just travel around and relax on some beaches, um, go for some hikes, maybe buy a new car, you know. So that's what I would do if I won the lottery. That's what I would do with the money. What about you? What would you do with the money? Would you go on vacation or would you buy something? Let me know what you would do if you won the lottery. Again, no right or wrong answers. <laughs> I would love to see your answers. I'd love to read out your comments. Makes it fun. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. So we'll move on to another question. This might be our last question. We might have time for two more. Okay. Uh, let's see. Oh, okay. Let's do this one. Do you feel like the future is coming quickly or is it far, far away? So I'll just divide this. So the future, is it coming quickly or is it far away? How do you feel? So for me, I feel like the future is kind of coming quickly. Like, I feel like time is passing by really fast. So I need to get my rearing gear and try and get my school stuff finished and try to like 
you know, maybe find a job down the road in the future. So for me, I feel like the future is coming quickly. But what about for you? Maybe it's far away for you, or maybe it's quickly coming quickly for you too as well. How is it for you guys? I'd like you to tell me in the comments. Someone said, okay, finally someone responded, nice. Someone said the future's coming quickly for them too. Yes, I can totally relate. Thank you for your input. Good. All right, and if anyone else wants to chime in on this, please feel free to do so. Okay, I think we have time for one more question at least. Okay, let's get rid of the lottery question. We're all done with that. Okay, what is another? Oh, okay, I, th I think this is good. Okay. Um, what makes time seem to go faster? Okay. So, this is a good one, I think. What makes time seem to go faster? So, we'll put a little chart here. And what makes time go slower? Okay. So, let's see. So, what makes time seem to pass by quickly? Remember the idiom? Time flies by when you're having fun. So what makes time seem to go faster for you? So remember for me, I put down camping. So that's, that's just me, but what about you? So what makes time go by quickly for you? What do you guys think? Any thoughts? Okay, someone said partying. Good, yeah, perhaps partying for sure. Partying, um, what else? For me, internet surfing. Uh, whenever I'm surfing on the internet, especially when I'm on my phone, oh my goodness, the time goes by so quickly. Sometimes I'll be on my phone and then I'll be like two hours later, but whoa, it's 12 o'clock already? I should go to bed, whoops. Okay, if you have any other thoughts on what makes time go by faster, feel free to let me know in the comments. Uh, let's see. How about slower? What makes time go by slower for you? So, when, sometimes it seems like the time is just crawling so slowly and it's like, oh. So for me, um, it's when I'm on transit, when I take public transit. Not always, but sometimes. So if I have to go on a bus, for example, it's like, oh my God, I just want to get there already. Like I don't have a car, so when I visit my family, they live in North Vancouver. I live in New Westminster, so I'm on the bus for an hour and a half when I visit my family. So time goes by really slowly when I take public transit. But sometimes I can make time go faster if I listen to a podcast. Listen to a podcast. So it's kind of like the radio where someone talks about something. These are really fun by the way. I recommend you download some podcasts this helps make time pass by more quickly when I take public transit. Okay, what else can make time go by slowly? What do you guys think? What makes time just drag? Oh, any thoughts? Someone said when I'm bored. Good, yeah. When we're bored, absolutely. So it could be, you know, at work, at school, at home. It could be anywhere, like on transit. When you are bored, time passes by slowly. Absolutely. Any other thoughts? When does time pass by slowly for you guys? For me, when I have to do readings for my assignments at school. So doing, so when I do homework, or assigned readings. Oh my goodness, the time passes by so slowly for me. I am a very slow reader, 
And sometimes the readings I do for my course are very boring. So sometimes time passes by very slowly whenever I have to do these readings. Okay, guys, so we are at the end of our second class now. Woohoo! So we're going to take a 10 minute break and then we're going to do our elective course. So I'll see you guys in 10 minutes. Have a nice break. Bye bye.
Hi guys and welcome back. Right, it's our last class for today, so we're going to end off strong, aren't we? Okay, so what is our class going to be about? It is going to be with breaking news English. All right, so it's a bit of a shorter article and it is all about the world's beaches disappearing. Ooh, okay, so we're kind of going into dark topic territory again. Um, but I think it is important to be aware of these issues, especially global climate issues and what's going to happen around the world in the future. Okay, so you notice today the overarching topic is the future. First, we talked about um, bioterrorism, how that could happen in the future. Then we talked about idioms to do with the future. Now we're talking about the possibility of oceans, no, beaches, sorry, beaches disappearing in the future. All right, so now what we'll do, let's see, okay. Actually, let's begin with a little quick discussion question. Look at this title here. How do you feel when you look at this title? What are your feelings? How do you feel when you look at this, when you read this title? Do you feel happy? I'd be surprised if you said you feel happy, but I can't tell you how to feel. How would you feel? Okay, somebody said sad, good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, maybe you feel a bit sad when you see this. Um, I felt sad when I read this title because I love the beach. I love to go and just like hang out in the sand, go for a little swim sometimes. So it's kind of a little bit sad to see that the beaches are disappearing. Um, how about anxious? Um, I know I feel a little bit anxious because some animals, they need to have beach habitat to survive. Some animals depend on the sand to survive. So if there are no beaches, certain animals could go extinct. They could die. So that makes me a little anxious, worried basically. I feel a little anxious. I feel a bit worried. Okay, let me know if you have any other thoughts about this. Okay, so what we're going to do is we are going to read through this article just one time. I'm going to read it out once. After that, we're going to do the true or false sections, okay? While I go through this article, I'm going to try to explain what's happening and I'm going to put up a few new words that I think might be helpful to you. Okay, so you guys ready? Here we go in three, two, one. All right, half of world's beaches could disappear by 2100. Rising sea levels could see the demise of half of the world's beaches by the end of the century. Oh my. Okay, so what is demise? Demise, so that means the end of something. So, for example, um, the dodo, which is an extinct flightless bird, it met its demise hundreds of years ago when people psh, shot it. So people hunted all the dodos to extinction. The dodo met its demise. It met its end hundreds of years ago. Okay, now, actually, before I go through the rest of this article, let's set up a few interesting questions. Maybe let's try to predict what's gonna happen. Okay, so let's see, rising sea level. Uh, I want you to think, um, hmm. Will any famous beaches, will any famous beaches disappear? So, you know, there's some very famous beaches like in Australia, in California, in Brazil, in Spain, like there's a lot of big famous beaches. What do you guys think? Do you think any famous beaches will disappear? 
You can say yes or no, it doesn't matter. Maybe don't read, don't cheat, but just what do you think? What do you think will happen? Like, will any famous beaches disappear? This is just kind of like a fun little prediction activity to keep your mind awake while you're reading. Um, let's think of another question. Um, ah, here's a good one. Hmm, which countries are going to be affected? What do you think? Which countries will be the most affected? The most affected. What do you guys think? Do you have any thoughts or guesses? Which countries will be the most affected from this? What do you think? Okay. Um, let's think of one more question. Um, is there any way to stop beaches from disappearing? Beaches from disappearing. Okay. Oh, and one more question. Um, sorry. Why? Why are beaches disappearing? What's making them disappear? Is someone, is someone stealing them? Are they just disappearing out of thin air? What's happening? What's going on? All right, so these are some questions I want you to think about while we're reading. See if you can answer them and find these questions. If you can answer them now, that's awesome. Please give me some answers. So, will any famous beaches disappear? Yes or no? Why are beaches disappearing? What's going on? What's happening? Why are they going away? What do you think? What are your predictions? And which countries will be the most affected? Like which countries are gonna lose their beaches the most? Canada, the United States, somewhere else? What do you think? Is there any way to stop beaches from disappearing? What can we do to stop this? What do you think? Okay, I don't see anyone typing in their thoughts now. That's okay. Again, think about these questions when we're reading through this. See if you can find the answers. Okay, so I'm going to start from the top again. Here we go in three, two, one. Half of world's beaches could disappear by 20, 2100. So this year, March 6, 2020, this article was reported. Rising sea levels could see the demise of half of the world's beaches by the end of this century. Climate scientists predict that 50% of sandy beaches along the world's coastlines could vanish over the next eight decades if climate change continues on its current path. Okay, that doesn't sound so good. All right, so... Here's the world. And let's say all the world, maybe they have some beaches. So here's some beaches. So these little things are beaches. But the sea level, it's going up. So the sea level is rising. So that means half of these beaches might go. So we're gonna say bye-bye to 50% of our beaches. That's pretty scary. That's pretty insane, hey? Okay, continuing on. So the climate scientists are from the European Commission's Joint Research Center. They warned that the shorelines of many highly populated areas, okay, so this here's a hint. So the shorelines of many highly populated areas and tourist hotspots are threatened by erosion from climate change and surging sea levels. Okay, what is erosion? I think this is a good word, especially in today's climate. So this is a noun. So erosion is a natural process. So let's say we have a cliff here. So here's a house 
And what happens is that over time, due to, you know, the weather and the oceans going up against the cliff, it's going to erode. So that means it's going to slowly disappear. So this is erosion, like you're losing bits of rock and sand. Now, eventually, if it erodes too much, this house is going to be in trouble. Eventually, whoop, bye-bye house, into the ocean it goes. So this is erosion. It happens to rocks, mountains, cliffs, and beaches. So this is a major problem of beaches disappearing. Hint, hint. Okay. So, so far we've answered a couple questions. So, basically climate change is one reason, specifically erosion and sea level rise. So, that's why the beaches are disappearing. We have erosion and sea level rise, bye-bye beaches. All right. Okay, now moving on. Okay, areas at risk of disappearing forever include well-known popular beaches such as Australia's surfer paradise, the islands of Hawaii, Brazil's Copacabana beach, and the Costa del Sol in Spain. Okay, so will any famous beaches disappear? What do you guys think the answer is? Someone said yes, very good. Well, not good, kind of sad, but yes, absolutely. Many famous beaches in Australia, Hawaii, Spain, Brazil, all those countries are going to experience a disappearance of their coastline. Okay, so we've got two of our countries, uh, we've got uh, two of our questions answered. Okay, so we are done the first half of the paragraph. We're going to move on to the second half. Here we go. The scientists reported that countries, oh, countries like the Gambia and Guinea-Bissau in Africa are predicted to lose over 60% of their beaches. The country to be worst affected is Australia, where 12,000 kilometers of coastline could end up underwater forever. Okay, that's pretty crazy. So a couple countries were mentioned. So you can just tell me one country that's going to be badly affected by this. Which country is going to lose a lot of coastline? Okay, so I'll give you, I'm going to draw a picture, a very bad one. Give you a hint. Australia, good, yes. Australia is one of them, absolutely. And there's a few countries in Africa, two were mentioned. But there's obviously many countries that are going to be affected. Australia is the worst because Australia has a lot of coastline. Like they have a, they're very famous for beaches. So it's going to lose more than 60% of its coastline. So, you know, that's, that's a lot of coastline. That's insane. So poor Australia is going to suffer the worst, unfortunately. Okay, the researchers wrote that a substantial portion of the world's sandy coastline is already eroding, a situation that could be exacerbated by climate change. Okay, so we got a few long words. Substantial. Okay, so what is substantial? So substantial means like, a, a considerable amount. So, for example, yesterday I ate a substantial amount of food. So, I had bacon and eggs for breakfast, pad thai for lunch, and tacos for dinner, and ice cream for dessert. So, yesterday I had a substantial amount of food. I had a considerably large amount of food. So that is what substantial means. And what else? We also had exacerbated. This is another good word. 
exacerbated. So exacerbated essentially means worsened. Okay, so let me try and think of a problem. Okay, or a big thing. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the big earthquake in Japan in 2011. So in 2011, you know, Japan had a huge disaster. So they had an earthquake and they were in bad shape. Then a tsunami came and exacerbated the situation. So first there is an earthquake, really bad. Then a tsunami came, made things even worse. So that worsened the situation, exacerbated. Okay, now if you have any questions about any words or phrases, feel free to stop me and let me know and I could explain them again. Okay, uh, let's see. So basically um, we talked about, okay, so where are we? Just finding my spot. Okay, exacerbated by climate change. So climate change is making the beaches disappear really quickly. This could result in the near extinction of the world's sandy beaches by the end of the century. Oh dear, so by 2100, we might not have any beaches left, almost no beaches, that's sad. Research co-author Dr. Michaelis Vuzdokas, I'm not saying that right, sorry, said there were two important ways we could reduce this trend and save the beaches. Ooh, hooray. We can save the beaches. How? He said we had to reduce emissions and manage our coastline in a more sustainable way. Okay, so you know what reduce means? It means to lower emissions. Okay, what are emissions? So emissions refers to things that can come out of cars and factories. Let me just erase this. Okay, um, so for example, every time we hop into our vehicles and we go for a drive somewhere, we are releasing emissions. This is, these are emissions. Um, if we have factories, they are releasing emissions. Even cows, here's a cow. Um, cows are stinky, they fart. This is also an emission. We, us wanting to eat steaks and hamburgers causes emissions. So we have to reduce the amount of emissions we are making in order to stop climate change like from eroding and the sea level rise increasing. If we can do this, we can hopefully save the beaches. So that's one way. So is there any way to stop the beaches from disappearing? So I just told you, what can we do to stop the beaches from disappearing? So anyone have an answer? What was this called? We have to... Yes, reduce emissions, thank you. Reduce emissions, that is one way. There is one more. I'm not sure if you guys caught it, but we have to manage our coastline in a more sustainable way. Manage the coastline in a more sustainable way. So what does that mean? So this could mean very, this could mean different things for many people. So one way, for example, is that um, in certain countries like Australia or Thailand or Mexico, the beaches are extremely popular and many people come to these beaches. They all want to play on the beach and have a good time. Now, Maybe that's too many people though, and maybe it's not good for the beach. So what we could do maybe is limit, reduce the amount of people we can let on the beach. So instead of allowing a thousand people on the beach, maybe we could lower that to 700, you know? So maybe we can do that. Uh, what is another way? 
Do you guys have any thoughts on how we can sustainably manage our beaches? What about animals? Like maybe we could protect endangered species. So some endangered species need the coastline. They need these beaches. So maybe reducing the people on the beaches could help, perhaps. There's many different ways we could manage the coastline sustainably, basically. Okay, guys, good stuff. So that is the reading. And I wrote down a few new words here. I hope they help you out. Okay, now we're going to move on to true or false. Okay, so all you have to do is write true or false. Pretty easy, right? So I'm going to release, I'm going to erase the cow, the farty cow, and the dirty car and the dirty, dirty factory, releasing all their emissions. Okay. Let's get rid of this. Okay. True or false? Question number one. Okay. Let's do question A together. Climate scientists said that 50% of our beaches could disappear by the year 2100. True or false? What do you think? Actually, the answer is in the title right here. This is the answer. So that means the answer is true. Yes, indeed. So half the beaches or more than half could disappear by 2100. Okay, let's do letter B. Okay, now if the answer is false, please tell me why it's false. Why is it false or give me the correct answer, okay? Okay, qu let's question B. The scientists say climate change is threatening our beaches. True or false? Climate change is threatening our beaches. What do you guys think? All you have to do is write in true or false. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Any thoughts? Oh. All right, I see someone wrote true. Very good, nice. It is indeed true. Climate change is threatening the beaches. Remember erosion, sea level rise? I'm gonna put sea level rise because I think that is a very good word to know. Sea level rise. Okay, so yeah, usually this happens, especially when glaciers up in the North Pole and South Pole, they melt and therefore the ocean level rises. Also, with hotter temperature, the molecules in the water, they expand and it makes the ocean level get higher. Okay, guys, question C. The scientists say that tourist hot spots are safe from beach erosion. True or false? Tourist hot spots like Surfer's Paradise in Australia, Hawaiian Islands, Copacabana Beach in Brazil. They're totally safe from climate change. They're safe from beach erosion. Is this true or is this false? What do you think? Someone has said tr not true, I'm sorry. Um, the answer is actually false. These beaches are not safe. You can see here at the bottom of this paragraph. So popular beaches, Australia, islands of Hawaii, Brazil, and Spain, they, were, they are at risk of disappearing. So it's likely that they will disappear. Okay, D. Brazil's Copacabana Beach will not be affected by rising sea levels. True or false? This connects to C. So Copacabana is one of the most famous beaches in Brazil. It's not going to be affected by sea level rise. It's totally fine. True or false? What do you guys think? Any thoughts? The answer is indeed false. Very good. Thank you. So why is it false? Can you tell me? Can you tell me the actual answer? 
Brazil's Copacabana Beach is, yes, at risk of sea level rise. The beaches will erode. Okay. E. Some countries in Africa will lose over 60% of their beaches. True or false? So this is going to be in the start of the second paragraph. So some countries in Africa, more than 60% of their coastline is going to go bye-bye. Is this true or is this false? What do you guys think? Don't be afraid to submit your answers. Even if they're not correct, it's totally fine. We learn from our mistakes. I'm just going to prepare the rest of the board in the meantime. And someone said true. Very good. Yes, Africa is going to lose over 60% of its beaches, unfortunately. All right. F, Australia will be the worst affected country in the world. True or false? So Australia is going to get a lot of erosion and sea level rise, and they're going to lose their beaches. They are going to be the worst affected. True or false? What do you guys think? So this is just after the blurb on Africa losing its beaches. It says, the country to be worst affected is... True, good. Yes, Australia is going to be the worst affected by this. Okay, and G. Scientists say that most of the world's sandy beaches will not disappear. Most of the sandy beaches are going to be okay. True or false? What do you think, guys? Most of the sandy, world, sandy beaches are not going to disappear. Do you think this is correct or incorrect? Okay. And let's also do H, since we're down here already. Scientists said there were 10 things we can do to save our beaches. True or false? 10 things we can do to save our beaches. Are there 10? Are there 10 ways? I thought there were fewer than 10 ways, but I'm not sure. Okay, somebody said false for G. Good, excellent. Can you tell me why it's false by chance? Scientists say most of the world's sandy beaches will not disappear. What do you think? Are you able to give me the answer? Okay, if not, that's fine. So basically, if you look down here, it says this could result in the near extinction of the world's sandy beaches. So that means almost all the beaches are going to disappear. So that's why that's false. And somebody wrote false for H. That's great. Thank you so much. Very good. So scientists said there were 10 things we can do to save our beaches. There were not 10. How many things were there? Two, good. Yes, there are two things. Two things we can do, which we talked about earlier. Reduce emissions and manage our coastline in a sustainable way. Nice, good job, guys. Okay, that completes our true or false section. So next, I would like us to work on synonym match. You remember what a synonym is, right? Synonyms are similar words. So for example, angry and mad. They are synonyms. They have almost the same meaning, angry and mad. So some of these we already talked about. So this might be easy for you or it may not be. We'll find out. So let's get rid of the true or false. And go on to synonym and synonyms. Okay. Synonyms, synonyms, okay. So let's see, we got demise, which we already talked about. Demise, we have predict, and we have path. We got threatened. Remember I told you guys the word threat earlier? So this is the verb form, passive verb. Affected, ah, uh, oops, no, not affected, surging, sorry. Surging, 
surging. Okay. Let's start, excuse me. Okay, let's start with these five. Okay, so we got a whole bunch of words on the left side. We have course, method, impacted, increasing, considerable, forecast, movement, and worsened, endangered. Okay, so those are our 10 words. We have to match, the sim we have to match them to the correct word, okay? So what does demise mean? What is the synonym for demise? Let's see if you can remember what I told you about. So the demise of something, remember I talked about the dodo? The dodo met its demise hundreds of years ago when people hunted it. So a synonym for demise is, somebody said end, good, nice. End, all right, and that's letter H. Letter H, okay. Number two, predict. What is another word for predict? All right, so predict. We, of, we often use this to talk about things that will happen in the future. So for example, when you're watching a weather forecast, um, sometimes the weather, it, they're going to predict. Tomorrow it's going to rain, and then the day after it's going to be sunny with a high of 24 degrees. So what's another word for predict? What do you guys think? Oh, yes, forecast. Good. That is correct. Forecast. So predict and forecast have the same meaning. Forecast is letter F. F for forecast. How handy. Good, okay. Path. This one might be a bit difficult. Um, so, path can refer to a road that you take when you're going somewhere. So, this could be considered a path. So, it's kind of like the direction you are going in. So when we're talking about climate change though, so climate change is kind of headed in a direction. It's headed in a path where we could be in danger and the beaches could disappear. So this, this could be a bit of a tricky one. We can leave it blank for now if we don't have any answers, but see if you can give me an answer. Let's do number four. Number four. Threatened. Okay, this one's a bit easier. So let's say, for example, uh, thinking of a rare animal. Oh, tigers are threatened in certain countries. Um, say in Indonesia, the Indonesian tiger is a threatened species. It means it's in danger of dying soon if we don't do something to save it. Okay, so. Threatened. What is the synonym for threatened? Any thoughts? Endangered. Good. Thank you. So we often say endangered species, but we can also say threatened species. Okay. And next one, surging. Okay. So usually this refers to the ocean. Um, when I think of surging, I think of it going like whoosh, like crashing up against the shoreline and getting higher and higher. So what is a synonym for surging? What do you guys think? Any thoughts? Somebody said increasing and that is correct. Good. Increasing. Yes. Increasing sea levels, surging sea levels. Increasing and that is ah, uh, no, not I. D, okay. Endangered, that was J. Okay, good, nice stuff, guys. Um, I don't see any answers for number three yet. So number three, path, the synonym is A, course. Course, okay. All right, guys, hope we're doing okay. Um, if you have any questions or want me to make any example sentences, let me know. 
Uh, I'm going to erase these five in the meantime, though, and we're going to do the last five. Okay. Let's get rid of all that. And let's do number six. Affected. Affected. Number seven. Substantial. Remember I was talking about how I ate a substantial amount of food yesterday? Number eight, exacerbated. Exacerbated. Number nine, trend. Trend. And number 10, way. Okay. All right, guys, what is a Synonym for affected. What do you think? Affected. Uh, so, for example, if our beaches disappear, not only people, but animals will also be affected by the loss of beaches. Crabs, some fish, seaweed perhaps, they're going to be affected by this. Somebody said impacted. Good, that's letter C, impacted. So people and animals will be impacted or affected if we lose our beaches. Okay, and number seven, substantial. Once again, my food example. Ate a substantial amount of food yesterday. So what is the synonym for substantial? Any thoughts? So it's kind of similar to a lot or a big amount of. Oh, someone said considerable. Nice, good. Considerable. I ate a considerable amount of food yesterday. Okay, exacerbated. Remember I talked about this earlier? So what is a good synonym for exacerbated? So let's say, for example, um, okay, let's pretend I got sick. So let's say I got sick, I got a really bad fever, and but then I fall over and I hurt my knee. So I'm lying down on the couch. So I'm suffering from a really bad virus. I feel awful. And that's only exacerbated by my hurt knee. So my hurt knee just makes me feel worse. So what is a synonym for exacerbated? Worsen, good, thank you. Worsened, worsened. That's letter I, okay, letter I. Oh, and considerable, that was letter E, my bad. Sweet, good job guys, almost there. Okay, these last two a little bit tricky, maybe. Well, for me, I thought they were tricky. Maybe they're not tricky for you. Trend, okay, what is a good word for trend? A good synonym for trend. Okay, so you may have heard this word before, trend. So you may have even heard the word trending. So especially when we're talking about things on the internet, the popularity of things. So. When something trends, it means, you know, it's like kind of moving in a certain way. So let's say, for example, the trend, like our weather trends. How is our, how is our weather trends looking? So usually for climate change, the trend is that everywhere is getting warmer and warmer and warmer. That is the trend. So, what's another good word for trend? Any thoughts? Movement, good, someone said movement, thank you. Movement, all right. And that's G, so that means our last word, way. Oh, what could it be? Our way, okay. Way is method, good, method. Okay. So method or how you do things. So for example, my way of studying is to go to a coffee shop, drink coffee, and then I can study well. That's my method. That's my way of studying. 
Awesome. Okay. Good stuff, guys. Well done. Well done. Okay. Now, let's see. Um, okay. I think we can do a little bit of discussion for the last 10-ish minutes of class. Okay. So, I'm going to erase all this. Hopefully, these were, this is a good exercise for you guys to learn some new vocabulary. If you like, try practicing at home. Try making some sentences at home. That's your homework. I'd like you to try to make some sentences. You don't have to hand them in, but I think it's good practice for you to use new words that you've learned today. Okay, so discussion. Okay, so we're going to do discussion A. Now, let's do, let's do letter A. How, uh, what do you think about what you read? So, what do you think about what you read? Like, do you feel happy? Do you feel sad? Do you feel anxious? Are you scared? Are you angry? Um, or maybe you don't care. <laughs> So what do you think about, like, what do you think about this article? Um, so for me, when I read it, I, I for uh, me, I felt a bit sad because I think beaches are really nice, fun places to hang out. Um, but when I read the bottom part, there's two ways we can save our beaches. Then I felt a little happy and relieved towards the end. That's how I felt. But how did you feel reading this article? What did you think about it? Did you think it was interesting or frightening? I thought it was an interesting article. I kind of like articles like these. Climate change is quite interesting to me. Okay, so type out your comments and thoughts, please. And I would love to read them out, okay? Don't hesitate. Write in your comments now. Okay. Oh, okay, this could be a good one. What purposes do beach do beaches serve? Okay, so the purposes of beaches. I think this is a good one. So a purpose is a use. Like, why do we use beaches? So what is the use of a beach? Why do we use a beach? What are the purposes of beaches? What do you guys think? Why do you go to the beach? What do you think? Someone said to swim. Okay, good. Yeah, nice. Yeah, maybe to swim. For me, it's to relax. To relax. Any other thoughts? Now, it doesn't just have to be people. It can be for animals and plants too. Um, so for example, um, birds can eat shells from there. So birds can eat shells, well not shells, but like mollusks. So basically there is food for birds and other animals on the beach. Now is there any other purposes for beaches? Any other thoughts? Somebody wrote barbecue. Nice. Yeah, you could definitely have a barbecue. Yeah, barbecue with family and friends. With family or friends. Absolutely. Yeah, so basically, you know, to have fun. Any other thoughts? Any other? What about tourism? Tourism is a big one. So many countries like Australia, Thailand, and like Mexico and other countries, of course, they depend on tourism. Many people want to go to relax and swim at the beach. So tourism, beaches can be very important for tourism for certain countries. All right, good input guys, nice, nice, thank you. Okay, let's do another question. Um, I think this is a good one, okay. Um, what impact could the loss of beaches have on a country? Okay, 
So what's going to happen to countries who lose their beaches? This can be a bit of a scary thing to predict or forecast. Remember the new word, forecast? I want to write forecast here. So that means to predict, forecast. All right. So let's see. How is it? Okay. Impact impacts by the loss of beaches. Oh dear. So what's going to happen? Okay. So the beaches are gone. What's going to happen to a certain country? Let's pretend, uh, let's pretend we're talking about Australia, for example. So let's say Australia loses its beaches. Eh -eh. What's going to happen? What's going to happen to Australia? What do you think? Someone said no more swimming. Yeah, very good. No more swimming. No more swimming. Or maybe what about snorkeling? You know, where you swim with the fishes? Maybe snorkeling will be different. No swimming? No snorkeling, maybe? I mean, you can go snorkeling from a boat, I guess. So I'm going to put question mark for snorkeling. Um, anything else? What else would be affected? Any thoughts what could happen? What about animal extinctions? Maybe, maybe, I'm not sure, but maybe some animal extinction could happen. Extinctions, question mark. Maybe it will happen, maybe it won't. So animal extinctions could happen. Any other thoughts? What could happen? The impacts of losing a beach. Somebody said loss of tourism. Very good. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe loss of tourism. Maybe people won't want to go to Australia anymore if there aren't any beaches. They might choose to go to another country instead that doesn't have beaches. So yeah, loss of tourism. Absolutely. Um, loss of some fun. Yeah, if, it might be sad if we can't go to the beach anymore. So yeah, many things could happen. Um, like there's many different ways a country could be impacted. So in a course, when you have a loss of tourism, you have a loss of money in the country. So the economy goes down and, you know, that's usually not too good. It's difficult to deal with that. Okay, it looks like we have two minutes left. So I think we have time for one last question. Um, let's see, what is a good one? Hmm. Oh, okay, let's do this last one. This is a simple one. Um, are the beaches better than the countryside? So this is question D. Sorry, um, I kind of skipped ahead of this one. Are beaches better than the countryside? Now, there's no right or wrong answer for this. This is totally up to you. <coughs> Excuse me. So are beaches better than the countryside? You can say yes or you can say no. If you have a reason, it would be nice for you to say why. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Sorry. So in my opinion, I don't know, this is a tough question. For Canada, I think maybe the countryside's better because, I don't know, Canada's beaches are not that amazing. It's too cold to go swimming at the beach most of the time, to be honest. So if you want nice beaches, I feel like Canada's not the place to go. Um, for certain other countries, um, for example, when I went to Thailand, I think I enjoyed the beaches better than the countryside. So that's my opinion. So I think for me it depends where I am, which country or region I am. But Canada-wise, I think the countryside's better. Also, countryside, not at risk of disappearing like beaches, so that's good. That's a big positive. Maybe we'll be doing a lot of vacations to countrysides in the future. 
Okay, guys. So it is 12:50, and that means it's the end of our third class. I'd like to thank you for joining in today and for your participation. So tomorrow is Canada Day, so that means it's a holiday, and there is no school tomorrow. Whoop whoop. But I will be back on Thursday, and I do believe you might have some homework to do. So by Thursday, please try to submit your writing assignment if you can. Okay, guys. I hope you have a lovely Canada Day tomorrow. Sleep in, rest, relax, and have a great time. See you Thursday. Bye bye.